working in them fields for you. The heat, the sweat of my brow. Listen. And by the frost by night. And the sleep flooded from my eyes. He said, you wore me flam out. You lied to me. You deceived me. You stole from me. You made a mockery of me. Watch it. These 20 years I have been in your house. I served you 14 for your two daughters and six years for your flocks. And you changed my wages 10 times. He didn't know what he was going to get paid. He didn't know if it was going to last. He didn't know if your deal was in his hand, if you was going to change your mind by night or day. But one thing that Jacob understood, he knew who he belonged to. He understood who he belonged to. Sometimes we get in situations at work and we think people overlook us. We think we're, we're being mistreated. Sometimes we get in situations with our families, with our loved ones, and we think they're mistreating me. They're taking my kindness for weakness. They overlook what I do for them. But you got to quit looking at those things and remember who sent you. You got to remember who you belong to. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm going to ask somebody in this church, are you willing to fight for your family? Are you willing to fight to get it back? Are you willing to fight for the blessing of the Lord? Yes. Watch this. And the Bible reads, then Jacob, then you pay attention, then Jacob was left alone. Can I tell you right now, the devil always wants to get you by yourself. Can I tell you right now, he wants to get you in a back room somewhere and say, I don't want to see nobody. I want to stay right where I'm at. I don't want to go out there. I want to stay right here and get it right. You will never get it right sitting by yourself. Only way you ever get it right is take the hand of Jesus and let him lead you. The only way. Listen, then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him. I want you to understand what man he's wrestling against. You need to understand that he's the beginning and the end. He knows the middle. There ain't no place you're going to stand that he ain't already stood. He's already been there and done it. There ain't a devil in hell going to scare my Lord Jesus. So when they come in and they sing him at his weakest, can you see him? Son, I done told you down the road when the father-in-law come down here to get you. Did he tell you? That I couldn't mess with you because you belong to me. Now that you're by yourself. Jacob seen him come in. All I know is you. You ain't going to leave without blessing me. I want my family together. My brother's on the other side of town. He wants to kill me. See, Jacob got this word on the way down there doing what God told him to do. When God tells you to do something, I promise you, the devil's always going to do something to you. So the devil sends word. Your brother is on his way. He's got 400 soldiers with him coming towards you. The Bible says Jacob was in, he was terrified. 400 soldiers. I got all my family with me. I got my kids. We ain't no different. Watch this. He just put his hands on the Lord. You understand me? He wrestled with the Lord himself. He wrestled with the Lord himself. And limping away. And limping away. I know he's with me. And I know this is going to work out. But I ain't going to stop in this waiting room and just wait on God. I'm going to run and not grow weary. I'm going to walk. I'm going to do what I can do while I'm sitting in this waiting room. I'm still going to serve you, God. And I'm still going to believe that you're with me. And so what he told him, he said, now watch this. He said, I want you to take all of my, what he done really, I'm just going to, I'll just put it, I'll just put it to you. He put his favorite wife and his favorite kids he said, y'all get in the very back and hide. This other wife, I really don't care too much for. You go to the front line. This what's happening. He told you, I told you, the Bible's real good, Jerry. Man, I ain't got nothing on him. The other wife goes up front, and she's got all her kids up there in the front. And Jacob tells his ones in the back, his favorite ones. You see my brother come. You see he's all come. He got them 400 men with him. You know my brother. He starts killing everybody, the women and the children and everything else. You know, he mad at me. I ain't seen him in 20 years. You got to put yourself with him. He is terrified. He's done split his family up. He's done drew the short straw on him. I love you, but I don't love you that much. 
You go up here and you go back there. He starts dividing things. Even though the Lord doesn't tell him, I got this. But see, sometimes the Lord will put you in situations to show you a nasty heart. He'll put things on you. He'll put pressure on you. He'll put things on you and you'll think that you had it all together. Yeah, you all that in a box of chocolate. And then all of a sudden, you just figured out you just collapsed and you just cussed everybody out and jumped on the mailman and everything else and you figured out I missed it. I ain't as holy as I thought it was. Here's Jacob. I, maybe I don't trust you like I thought I was. Y'all now I'm split my family up. And now no matter, you know, you can tell somebody I'm sorry. How many of you know sometimes sorry don't get it? You say, yeah, I forgive you, but I know what your heart is. I know where we stand. We was put on the slaughter line. Somebody needs to understand me tonight. And even when they were sent to the front line, even the ones that they gave up on, God was still with them. And when they pulled right up in there to get them, said, here, here comes his brother. Has no evil intention. He has nothing but blessings in his hands. Jacob did a little, deserved, little scheming way. He did some things, sent some blessings, tried to tickle his ears on the way up there. We don't have to tickle ears. We don't have to tickle feelings. But what you're going to have to understand tonight is who you belong to. You got to understand that God's going to take you to mountains. And there's going to come some times that you're going to go through some scorching heat. There's going to come some times when some frost is going to bite on your butt cheek. There's going to come some times when you're so tired that you want to quit. There's going to come some times when you can't even get no sleep at night. There's going to come some times when you wrestle all night with God asking him to move. And the whole time we get in them situations, Derek, we love to hear that enemy. You ain't gonna make it. Yeah. Who you for? I know who you are. I know what you did. Church, you gotta learn. I told you it's a mindset last week. You gotta learn to set your mind on things above. You gotta learn to put your mind on his voice. Yeah. Listen for him and him only. And in the moments when you're at your weakest and at your vulnerable time, and right there. Remember, your pastor telling you right now, you're almost there. You're right there. Jacob said, I will wrestle this angel. I will do whatever it takes. I'll fight for my household. I will fight to get it back. I will fight for it not to be divided. I will fight. And I will trust you, Lord, if I got to go to the front line all by myself. Jacob walked to the front line to meet his brother and 400 men coming toward him. When everybody else thought it was over, Jacob said, but I know a man. And there he walked right to the front line, limping, limping. We act like it's too hard for us to even give, the, give God 40 minutes of prayer time by us. 40 minutes? Who got 40 minutes? You got a lifetime. You better start spending some time with him. Are you willing to limp away? Are you willing to fight for your family? Are you willing to pray? Are you willing to get down on your knees at night and take her by the hand and say, devil, you can't have my wife. Devil, you can't have my family. You can't have my children. When's the last time you put your hands on your children and prayed over them and blessed them and bind every devil in hell and said, I lose my children from these spiritual curses. When's the last time? You got to be willing to fight. We'll fight you in a minute. You pull out in front of me and shoot me in the bird. We get sucked out of our redneck. But we're going to fight for our kids. Well, we fight for them, we work for them, we provide for them. Bless your heart, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You call different, Jeremy. You ain't supposed to look the same. You're God's children. You ain't supposed to look like the world. You walk in the room, they're supposed to know that's God's man walked in. You walk in, they're supposed to know that's God's woman that just walked in the door. I ain't going to be shaking, my daddy's with me. I'm almost there. I'm almost through the door, Vic. And I know all hell's raising came right now and they're trying to stop me. But my Bible reads that the gates of hell will not prevail. You might come against me, but you will not, you will not take me. Church, I want to know if I got some fighters in here. Time to fight back, church. We gotta get our we gotta get our our minds on the kingdom. We got so many people out here that think they're doing things right in the Lord's sight and are so confused, blind as bats. So religious that they miss the whole spirit of Jesus. 
God don't care about your churches or your religion. He don't care about your denomination, where you're thinking. He don't care about none of all that. What he cares about is word. He said, I give it to you, use it. But you're going to have to do something. A woman of God taught me last week in the financial class. If you ain't done a financial class to get your bucks in there on, at the church on Sunday, it's awesome. It's amazing. I'm there, I'm on, and I do it. It's, it's amazing. Miss Cash told me, taught me something in there. And she said, if you, how many of you got your boots? I looked at her kind of funny. She said, we're going to have to we're gonna climb out of this. She's like, put your boots on. We're going to climb out of it. And the whole time I'm doing this sermon, I can hear her telling me this. So my question to you tonight, are you ready to put your boots on the climb this mountain that God can put in front of you? If you want the breakthrough and you want to get through where God took you, then you're going to have to put your boots on. You're going to have to walk. You're going to have to trust God even when it makes no sense. You're going to have to trust God when everything's shutting down. You're going to have to trust God when you're surrounded by enemies. You have to trust God even if i got to limp away out of here. Even if I got to be a sacrifice unto one to break the chains of it. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, whatever your will be. But the church's answer is more like, God, I need you to. And I need you to. God's saying, I was with you when you was all alone, when you thought you were surrounded by demons, when you thought the devil was about to take you out, when suicide thoughts took over you, when depressive spirits took over you, when you wanted to quit, when you wanted to end. The only reason you didn't cash out then, because I was in there too. Yeah. We got to remember who else is in the room. We are never alone, children of God. We are never alone. Dad, when he show up in a fiery truck, Jeremy, when he show up, when he smashed in and you can't get out, how many others in here? David will not show up when the gun's to your head. He won't let it take you. I'm telling you now, you can put me in a you can put me in a fiery furnace. You can lock the door, throw away the keys, but you still can't keep him out. You have favor with God. He shows up. Some of you got favor with God, but you've been dragging tail for so long. You don't know what the head looks like, and you don't understand you're a part of it. See, that God has three in one. When you join him, you join all three. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you become one with him. And God is never dragging tail. He never has to stop and say, can you help me out of this? He can never stop and say, I didn't see this one coming. Jeremy, I didn't know you was going to do that with that. Miss Cash, he never wakes up and says, oh, I seen when you was going to lose it. I seen when it was a bad day. I seen when you was tired. I seen when you were wore out. Church, I want everybody to stand to your feet if you would. I want you to receive this word if you didn't receive nothing else. These are the words of the Lord. He says, if you do these things, God so commands you, then you will be able to endure. He said, if you do what I told you to, I'll get you through it. If you'll listen to me, I'll strengthen you. If you'll listen to me, I'll take you places. If you'll listen to me, I will give you a breakthrough. If you listen to me, then I will run every devil in hell away from you. If you'll listen to me, you can endure it. I know you're weak, and I know you feel like giving up, and I know this world's been beating on you, but if you can endure it, and the only way you can endure it, the Lord said, follow my voice. Can I tell you, he's not like a man. He'll never lead you astray. He's not like the father-in-law that changes his mind ten times. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said, I don't have no favors. All I see is the blood. That's what the father sees. Just stand with you right there. Come up here and play me something, honey. Right? I'm going to ask everybody if you would bow your head for just a moment. I want you to just take two minutes with God right now on your own. And I'm going to lead you right there where I'm taking you. What are some things that you need to start fighting for? Do you need to start fighting to get your, your house in order? Do you need to start fighting to get a better relationship with your father? Do you need to start fighting to get a better relationship with your kids? Do you need to get a better relationship with your wife? What are some things that you need to fight for? 